Hi guys, Rob here again from Kickback Garage. Now, this video is the second in the series of the Lambretta TV175 rebuild. Very exciting stuff. And today I'm going to concentrate mostly on rebuilding the uh, Lambretta original <laughs> Lambretta uh, disc brake cub. Um, I've never done this before, so it could be a total disaster. So grab yourself a coffee and uh, we'll crack on with it. Right, I really hope that the uh, the sound is okay. I've got my little uh, oven going there because it's a bit nippy out in the garage and it's blowing a bit of a gale outside. Uh, before I start rebuilding this, I've got a couple of issues I need to sort out. Um, first off, first off is uh, now the speedo drive looks pretty good, but it's all been painted into the uh, into the hub, and uh, these bearings don't have to don't actually turn. They're really, really rough. What I think has happened is when this was uh, sandblasted, I think they've sandblasted with the bearings in. So they, they need to come out. I've got a bearing puller. I've got one on each side there. So it's just a case of opening that circle clip and uh, pulling them out with a bearing puller. I'll show you how I do that one. The second issue I have is when you're painting these type of hubs, it's really important to uh, cover up the area, sort of definitely cover up the area here at least for the the disc pad because uh, reading in stickies uh, manual here it says that you should really take away the paint on the outside so that the pad can uh, move in and out freely problem here is that it's got really really nice uh, paintwork going on here and even clear coat so i can't even get the uh, disc pad in there so what i'm gonna have to do is take out the dremel and fit it with, uh, I think, either a, a wire attachment or a sanding attachment. And I'm going to have to remove remove the paint on the inside here. Also, the end caps here don't fit because the paint is a bit thick. So I think I'm going to take a Stanley knife or something and just cut those out so that I can uh, fit those okay. Another annoying thing is that these threads have also been painted. But ho hopefully, uh, I can chase those out with the uh, with tap and... Uh, sort that one out so yeah let's uh let's start with the dremel thing all right so what i've done i fit this little uh wire wool attachment to my dremel here and i'm really really hoping that i can get into this uh uh this pad housing and uh i don't need to go mad here it's just this this surface here and I don't need, I've got enough room for the circle clip, so I don't need to take away that. So it's just it's just this piece here, and this this area here as well needs to go. So, wish me luck, wish me luck. <laughs> Amazingly, that little uh, Dremel uh, fixture there has taken the paint off really quick. So, it shouldn't be too long, uh, long of a job, this one. Cool. So the paint surface came off that really easy. I'm pleased with that. Uh, I killed my Dremel fixture, as you can see. All the, uh, the the reason for that is because my Dremel is buggered and I can't uh, adjust the speed on it, but never mind. Uh, that's that job done. So the next job, oh, that's so annoying. He hasn't, um, he hasn't masked off the uh, threads on the, on the hub either. Oh. So the next uh, job at hand is removing these bearings here. Now, there is a tube in between the bearings, so you can't really get to it to be able to knock it out. So what I'm gonna do is use this, which I borrowed from work. I'm not that posh that I've got one in my garage, but this is uh, a blind bearing puller tool or an internal bearing puller tool. And this works by uh, pressing in there. And when you tighten that up, it expands this uh, inner piece which grips the inside of the bearing. If I'm really, really unlucky, you just pull out the, uh, the center race, but uh, I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope that this, uh, this works. I'm gonna start on this side here. And firstly, we have to remove the circlip that's stuck in here. Let's see how hard that is. Oh, 
that was uh, that was okay actually I love it when a plank comes together and then it's a case of inserting this bearing to pull it all uh, the important bit being you have to get it to line up at the back there coffee there and it's just a case of knocking it out like this Let's see if it works hey easy peasy lemon squeezy so that one's out and like I said, we've got a spacer tube in here. Can take that out. Oi, oi, oi. That grease looks <laughs> horrible. And once you've got one out, you're okay because then you can just uh, uh, knock it out from the other side. But because I've got this bearing tool uh, jobby, I'm going to use it here as well, I think. Hey, so that's that removed and I'm going to give it a good clean up there before I start rebuilding this that was actually pretty disgusting the uh, the grease that was in there and it was full of uh, uh, grit as well so I uh, imagine that's probably the original grease uh, that they've been pumping in there uh, over the past few years anyway that's been removed all sorted uh, now it's time to uh, look at the disc itself it looks pretty good this is the original disc it's not too bad the, there's some slight rusting on the on the surface here and here we've got a little, tiny little bit of rust surface rust as well and there's also some grease and stuff here so what I'm going to do I'm going to uh, wash it with some brake cleaner and I'll put it in my lathe and spin it up and I'll just use some of this uh, M3 pad stuff to uh, get rid of the surface rust. I think that should do the job, to tell you the truth. Unfortunately, uh, it didn't fit in my lathe. It was about two millimeters too, uh, too fat. So I'm gonna have to do it the, uh, the good old fashioned way. Oi, I think that should be enough brake cleaning. What do you reckon? I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill myself here with the fumes. I'm just gonna have to rub this. I think that cleaned up pretty well. Unfortunately, when uh, when I was looking through the parts, uh, the original parts on uh, on this hub here, uh, the axle was bent. Now, I'm not sure if it was bent because of some uh, rough usage or because um, it's been bent in storage or something like that because it's uh, I've never seen that before on uh, on an axle. That is for the something else. But uh, what I wanted to show you here is I ended up buying a full stainless renewal kit from MB Development, and this kit should be complete. So I've got all the parts, bits, and bobbins, and new bearings that I need to uh, to fit this into the hub and on the other side these will only fit one way obviously because you have bearing got the bearing seal and the bearing these two I'm not sure where where they're supposed to live the spacer tube and the bearing for the other side 
as you can see this has got a shoulder on there so you have to be really careful when you're removing the uh, when you're removing the axle that you push it out on the right side it'll only come out one way right I've been looking at the uh, exploded diagram of this thing because not actually not a lot of resources that, um, that go into detail on how to build this uh, stick is the Bible including but uh, as far as I'm aware it's just a case of fitting the two bearings with the spacer tube in uh, in between here so I'm gonna do that and uh, as you can see here I've packed the the bearings with grease I use this one uh, I like to use this on wheel bearings and I like to use this on uh, fork springs because this is a uh, high load uh, marine type grease so that it doesn't get washed out that easy and obviously you can uh, you can pump in some more grease when it's all built up using the uh, original grease nipple so this one is pretty good but I um, and I've had good good success with it but it's uh, quite expensive and no I'm not sponsored by Bellaray it's just uh, what I can get hold of at my uh, local uh, hardware store so let's do that I've got actually got a drift for this uh, I've no idea why I've got this drift I think uh, when I was buying tools at some time I, uh, I threw that on there it's never been used before so that was pretty handy and I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a smear on the outside of the bearing here just to ease it in right Nice, that actually turns, which is a great thing. Damn it, there's some grease. There's some grease on that. Um, bastard! I hate that when that happens. And then we'll uh, put the spacer tube in there. Where are you, baby? Where are you? Where is my spacer tube? There it is. Spacer tube goes in there. And then bearing number two. So that was mistake number one. Uh, fit this one first and fit your circlip before you fit the other bearing. Otherwise you press the bearing out on this side. <laughs> Learning by doing. So I've got a new circlip here which was uh, in the MB uh, kit. Put this, see if I can slide her in there. Get in, please. There you go. So she's in. And then we have uh, one of the seals. Let's see if I can press that one in by hand. I'm pretty sure it should be okay. Yeah, easy does it. I can just give it a bit of a bit of a squeeze with the drift and that should stop your uh, grease from uh, pouring out all over the place so that's one done so I've just fit this uh, new uh, drive pinion seal for the uh, speedometer and that just uh, slots into the groove here and then I will uh, fit the disc itself there you go uh, there is some paint on there on the pins 
but it doesn't seem to have any adverse effect of how uh, how the disc slides up and down because it's actually the disc that is uh, floating. But I think, with me being pedantic, I think I'm going to take a little bit of uh, emery paper and just file away the uh, file away the paint that's on these pins here, just to uh, just to be on the safe side. I think there. It's coming off quite quickly. So the next job is to fit the pads. Now, uh, reading in stickies manually, yeah, it says that uh, the modern type pads can be a little bit tight in there. So you should like take the radius off the edge here with the paint because the paint is a bit thick. Now, I'm not sure you can see that, but that doesn't actually fit in there properly. So I'm going to have to uh, take it out again. There we go. And slide it out there maybe yeah good so what I'm gonna have to do is take some uh, emery cloth and take away the paint on this outside surface here onwards and upwards right as you can see here I've taken the paint off the outside edge of the uh, the new pad here and uh, let's see if it'll uh, slot in there like it should do oh there you go perfect even a bit of a uh, bit of jiggle room there as well so that's good that's that sorted right next job I have uh, just uh, run through these threads on the tap the threads that hold the uh, disc pad adjuster and I'm gonna just wind in this uh, set screw until it's flush on the back side there and it is a four mil hex. Where is my screw? There it is. Uh, where is my? Uh, there it is. <laughs> so I'll just hold that and just wind it on so that I don't lose anything here. So that's where it should be. Just, uh, just hand tight, it's just so I don't, don't lose it. And then I need to fit the seal here. Now the reason why I haven't done this yet is that I've been uh, I've been looking in the old interwebs and as far as I can gather by looking, just looking at the photos and the, uh, the diagrams, the seal has to go on with the springy side facing the, uh, facing the speedo drive. I'm not sure why that is, to tell you the truth. Is that because if you overfill the uh, wheel bearings, then uh, you'll also be lubricating that? Or I'm not sure. Because the funny thing is, is you, you do, have, of course, have a speedo drive lubrication uh, lead nipple that goes in there. So, but anyway, that's, uh, I think that's the way it is. And uh, looking at the stickies book as well, it looks like there's one firmly lodged that way. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'll fit that that way. And for that, I'm just going to use. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to throw stuff about. For that, I'm just going to use the old grease on the inside there. Yeah, it should really fit, really. Why don't you fit in? There we go. Just in case of pressing that in. There we go. <laughs> pressing that on. Right, I've just had an attempt at putting this together, and as you can see, there's loads of uh, grease here. Mmm, not good. So I have to clean that up again. And what it is, is there's lots of deposits of shite in the bottom here. This is this seal here has probably been, uh, been uh, killed at some point. And I really need to get my washing stuff in, the, in this groove here to get rid of all the grease and sand and stuff in the bottom there so I'll do that before <laughs> I try and put it together again I'm having a right 
nightmare trying to clean up uh, all the grease in the bottom here because what well, I think what's happened is the old grease hasn't been taken away or hasn't been uh, uh, gotten rid of with the uh, with the sandblasting process and it's the old grease has just been painted over so I didn't see it in there so it's a right nightmare trying to trying to get rid of all this Hopefully, I can put this together again now. Uh, try and get my head around what's happening. Let's see. Um, what I'm going to do is put some extra grease in the back here behind the seal for the uh, what's the magic? The uh, speedo drive. Just pack it in there. Give it plenty. Right. Looks good. Looking good. Looking good. Good looking. Apparently, this is the way to do it. So we'll uh, give it a go. I'll fit the. Uh, 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 uh. Fit the pad in here. There you go, pads there. Disc with the recess on the outside. Put that in there. Yepsy pepsy. And take your two halves. And put those together. And rotate the hub. It only fits, obviously, it only fits one way. So you have to re rotate the hub. Nope. Don't do it to me. No, get out. Get out of the hole, you bastard. So I just have to rotate it until it fits in all the holes. Very hard to see, but in there, the it's the posts it's supposed to fit on there. Oh. Just put a glove underneath Let's prevent damage to the little fish out there. There, fit the spindle, it's greased already. There, got the top hat, and we have a washer and a nut. Now, this nut here on the axle, uh, you don't have to tighten up really, really tight. It's apparently it's uh, somewhere like five or six newton meters it's supposed to be tightened and my uh, my torque wrench doesn't go that far down that looks pretty good actually chuff with that so look fits there I'm just doing this so that I don't lose these washers. <laughs> it's going to be a short while until I can uh, fit those. And this one on here. These are the locating, special locating washers that fit in the fit in the links. And then the next job is fitting the pad on this side. Also, I've taken off the uh, the paint on there. Just make sure that it slides up and down there. Easy enough. And then it's the actuation mechanism. 
Right, the actuator mechanism, I've just uh, put some light grease on the spring just to stop, uh, uh, what's it called, <laughs> corrosion. And I'm going to use some, I've got some super duper heavy duty uh, oil here, which I'm going to use. And the reason why I've put it in here is because I can use my fat belly to look. And I can open it up a little bit and just put a put a little bit of grease on the bearings here. So I use this one on the, on the back side of the on the pad here. It's quite thick. I just give it a bit of a, a bit of a coat there. basically so it doesn't squeak and rattle hopefully hopefully so that's job done there and this is uh, dead dead easy because it's just you've got these like slats that they fit in just have to line them up there you little bugger you bugger there go press that in and then we've got the circlip a brand new fancy one from uh, MB in uh, stainless. Uh, uh, one thing that I'm sure some people aren't uh, aren't aware of is there's actually two ways to fit a, a circlip. If you find like if it's really hard to see on the camera, I suppose, but if the the indentations they they are orientated away from the hole so if I fit this this way when I go to grab it to take it out it'll just slip off so this is the correct way here put this on see if I can get this baby in there you go Yeah, she's sat in the place, and uh, now I need to find the uh, all singing and dancing uh, Lambretta eye cap. Where is it? Voila! It's the last touch to the job. Uh, then I'm gonna fit the speedo drive. I'll do that now. Twist in, perfect, perfect. And I think there's some paint or something on there, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna give that a little bit of a, a polish, I think. Well, that looks better. Time to fit that one. Speedo drive, grease nipples. Now, I haven't actually. Don't think I've got a tap that will fit those, but uh, they definitely need a, a proper cleaning up. These two, I've got two of those. I think I'll use the original ones all the same. I'll just blow through and make sure they're in good nick and uh, clean up a little bit. That's better. They look good. Put that there. Then uh, we can fit this one to the speed or drive mechanism. Looking good. Looking good. Hmm. Not looking good. That snapped in there. Fuck! <laughs> you bastard! Hmm. Shit. You went to me loose on. 
So how am I going to get that out of there again? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Thinking, thinking. Well, that was annoying, wasn't it? That's probably not this uh, normal procedure, but I'm going to use uh, a Torx, I think. Just going to... Put a Torx driver in there and see if we can ease that puppy out. Because uh -huh. I really, really don't fancy taking out the whole taking out the whole disc oh well there you go huh a bit of uh, kickback garage ingenuity for you just goes to show there we go got that out again so and maybe we have to try again I think I'll use this one although this one needs a bit of a clean up as well Ta -da! Uh, this one isn't a brass one, so probably a, a replacement at some time. Because uh, I think the original type ones were brass, but who cares? Uh, if as long as this doesn't snap in the threads, I'm uh, I'm pretty happy. Uh, so let's see. Voila! Piece of shit. So that's that side pretty much uh, sorted. Ooh. <laughs> oh, it actually works. And then I will uh, refit the larger of the two uh, grease nipples, which, which uh, should go in here. Hopefully with a little bit more success than the last one that I put in. <laughs> nice one. Job done. So the second to last thing I'm going to do is just uh, lightly nip up the, uh, the mechanism here for uh, adjusting the pad. Now to do this, you uh, obviously just want to fit a, a socket there and I wind it in the grub screw until the disc I go it locks up and I'll take it back it off half a turn and then I'll tighten down the outer screw with a socket that I've got on here and I'm just going to leave it like that so because basically when I put it fit it on the bike, I want to do a if I want to do a minor adjustment, I can do that. So what I'm gonna do now is fit three of the windows and I'll keep one of the windows out so that I can adjust that and uh, put the tab washer on when uh, when we've got it in the scooter. As you can see the windows are really really discolored and I, I've been uh, I've been um, scrubbing them like mad and I just can't get the discoloration off so uh, because this is going to look as good as it looks I th really think I'm just going to buy some new uh, some new windows here but uh, the same in the hassle of showing you how you fit the windows uh, at a later date that I thought I'd uh, just show you here now and basically I think the easiest way of doing it is I bend them slightly like this it's got a bit of a u-shape on them uh, enter, enter them in the back there obviously these only go one way this side hasn't got the the spacing for the cast right are you with me so I've pushed them on on that back side there and because I've started the bend hopefully let's without breaking these buggers I start off the bend here feed them in the back use a small screwdriver be careful if you've got new paint like we have uh, I just enter it on this side here uh, 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 don't be naughty just gonna move her a little bit I hold it hooked up there 
and I just press her in here and just work my way through there you go and then you can straighten it out again and that's the windows fitted now I have to take these off but anyway while I'm taking these off you can uh, do the old uh, subscribe give me a thumbs up and hopefully I'll uh, see you all in the next video Ta-ra!